Hello everyone, how are you guys doing today? My name is Harris and welcome back to my channel. So I am uh, once again back on Louis CK. Uh, I, as you know, I really do enjoy watching Louis CK and I think he's I, I think he's absolutely brilliant when it comes to storytelling, the jokes he does and the creative way he starts everything. And I love it how he drags on a joke by making it more and more uncomfortable for audience members and people. And that's his catch because I absolutely love it whenever he does something where he drags on a joke or talk about a story and just keep digging into it more and more and more and making you feel more and more uncomfortable. But at the same time, it is absolutely hilarious. So today I'm going to be looking at Louis C.K. and uh, Hercules Hill. Uh, it's obviously we all know where that came from and it, it's Louis C.K. explanation that's what I want to know about it so without any delays let's get to Louis C.K. Alkali's Hill here we go NPR. we always listen to NPR because we're better than you <laughs> and uh, so we're listening to NPR for breakfast the other morning and there's this one story where they kept using this phrase they kept saying 9-11 deniers they kept saying that 9-11 deniers. <laughs> and my daughter was like, what is that? And I said, well, it's a group of people that think September 11th was a conspiracy. And she said, oh, I thought they were saying 9-11 deniers. <laughs> I've seen this. Yeah, she thought they meant nine people <laughs> who just ain't buying this 11 bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful child's it's mind. A, uh, small fringe group. <laughs> There's only nine of them. <laughs> but they still got an NPR. They got on the radio because <laughs> they're dedicated. They protest every day. They're the 9 11 <laughs> deniers. <laughs> they're outside of the White House. It goes 10, 12, 13. <laughs> <laughs> the excellent as well. Why do we have 11? <laughs> when we have 13 and 14 and 15, <laughs> 16, 17, <laughs> motherfucking 18 and 19, <laughs> but we do not have a one team. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to one team? <laughs> I've seen this. I actually love this. Mr. President, give us back one team. <laughs> one ten. I love that. I think next time I go to shore, somebody say it's eleven. I'll be like, no, it's one ten. I don't mean to offend any Chinese people with the stereotype. <laughs> but That's right. I'm Chinese, motherfuckers. <laughs> See what I mean? I'm sorry. He drags it. <laughs> Here's the thing. Stereotypes are harmful. <laughs> That's the truth. But the, the voices are funny. <laughs> I, I don't know how to reconcile those two facts. I enjoy doing the voices. They're offensive. So I do them at home. I used to do them for my kids when they were little. They liked them. They didn't know it was a race thing. They just enjoy Daddy, do the friendly man. You want me to be the friendly man, little girl? <laughs> we love the friendly man. He loves little white girls, too. Let's have some scrambled eggs. Oh, fuck, he you knows. <laughs> Something's wrong with his head. <laughs> and then they grew up, and I was like, don't talk about the friendly man. <laughs> yeah, don't. Maybe don't talk to your teachers about this. It ain't safe. My kids go to uh, public school in New York City and uh, they, yeah, all right. Uh, 
send your kids there then. Teach them that that's what life is like. Oh, sorry. Trying the to teachers get amaze me because I don't know. This is the worst. Here's the worst thing about this country to me is that there's there's no more noble profession than to be a public school teacher. Is it's easily. Please, please don't. You're not gonna like it. <laughs> You're not gonna like it. You're yeah. Gonna like <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't. Like it's Louis kid. Don't fucking clap, Chet. You'll regret it at the end of the thing. <laughs> In a democracy, there's no more noble contribution you can make than to teach in a public school. And in this country, the people that do that, they're fucking losers. <laughs> they're just rock bottom fucking losers. <laughs> and everybody knows it, but they keep doing it. <laughs> New people are teaching every day, knowing how shitty it is. They show up, they tell them ahead of time, hi, what is this job? And they say, okay, here's what we need you to do. We need you to make children know math. <laughs> wow. Do they want to know math? No, they no, don't want to know it. No, they're fucking like. You need to make them know it against their will. Will. <laughs> while they're exploding sexually and <laughs> be It's not me, it's the video that's keep who are these children? Just whatever kids live near the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went to public school as well. How much Back home we went to private school. dollars every four years. <laughs> <laughs> what if I get really good at it? What happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. Nobody yeah. notices and you get fired and you die alone. <laughs> Okay, I'll try it for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's learning about Greek mythology, and she's asking me questions about it. She's like, Daddy, who's Achilles' mother? I said, I don't fucking know. Don't ask me that shit. I don't know who Achilles' mother is. Don't yell it out if you know it, please. Like, it's Camp Ampatees. Nobody cares <laughs> what you know. <laughs> <laughs> she had a question about Achilles, and it was an interesting question, and I'll tell it to you. But first... The story of Achilles, real quick. Achilles was a baby, uh, uh, he was a Greek um, ki uh, baby. And <laughs> he didn't stay that way, but when he was Greek god. a Greek baby, uh, his mother, who was a goddess, um, took him into the river Styx, which is at Hades, the land of the dead. And she dipped him in the water of the river Styx because there was a magical quality to that water that you, it would make you impervious of any harm. You couldn't be hurt. It was like a shield, right? So she, she dipped him in that water to protect him. But she held him by the heel. That's the important detail. Held him by the heel. Which is an awkward way to <laughs> hold a baby. Hold a baby. <laughs> by the heel. Try holding a baby by the heel <laughs> and dipping it in a river. You will never see that baby again. <laughs> Rubbish got very strong uh, current. The baby <laughs> in the water. <laughs> I was trying to wash him and he fell in the river. <laughs> it's time, Mr. Achilles, I lose your baby. <laughs> you told me to hold him by the hill. <laughs> sleep. The Achilles is mother's That's stupid extra name. as well. It's a lesser known <laughs> character in the Iliad. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> His mother, she was able to hold on, of course, because she was a goddess. She's a goddess. <laughs> she was the goddess of grip or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> and she held on, and then he was protected, except on his heel. His heel was not protected, and so that's what we call your Achilles heel, your one vulnerable place. Everybody's got their Achilles heel. Achilles' Achilles heel <laughs> was, was his heel. <laughs> his heel. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> Anyway, so my daughter, here was her question. She said, how come his mother didn't just dip him again? <laughs> she could have just dipped him one more time. Yeah. With the other leg in there. <laughs> Which is she just like, give, you're like a sign that says one dip per goddess. <laughs> Did you ever color an Easter egg? It's not that complicated. You dip it, and then you hold it differently and dip it again. <laughs> Smart kid. I, I, I was proud of her. 
But at the yeah. same time, I thought, who the fuck are you to judge this woman? <laughs> <laughs> Bother me. Because here's what the story of Achilles teaches me. Is that if you're a parent, it's never enough what you do to these motherfuckers. <laughs> it's just never enough. <laughs> it's still going to be your fault. Yeah. How much more do you want from a mother? She dipped her kid in magic water <laughs> and protected 99% of his body. 99, yeah. Is any of it up to him? He could have just wore a big shoe and be careful. Yeah. <laughs> but he goes out and Good concept, isn't it? fucking flip flops. <laughs> and a sword and fights the whole planet. I'm a Achilles since my mother did me. Finally, somebody got him in the heel, and he's like, "Ma!" <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> that was Louis C.K. and Hercules Hill. Like I've seen this, I've I've seen this uh, quite a few times, and it just still cracks me up, man. It's so funny though. The whole concept, he bring it back all the way to, like, no matter what the fuck your parents do, it's never enough. And to be honest, he had, does have a point, because we as children are rather, we think we can do whatever the fuck we want, and whatever our parents does, we always go against it, because we're like, you don't know mom, you don't know dad, what it is like, you know what I mean, we always question them, simply because we think we know better. No matter how much we do for her, we always find a way to just... All our shortcomings are blamed on somebody else. That's like a perfect excuse. Oh, my parents never told me this. Motherfucker, put some effort into it and do it yourself. Your parents are here to give you whatever sport you need. They're there to teach you shit. But, oh, obviously, I won't go into a rant on this, but this is absolutely brilliant. I really, really enjoyed this once again. Because I have seen this quite a few times and it always cracks me up. And I talked about the uncomfortable joke. Like, whenever he starts on a small joke, he drags it quite a bit. But he does it in such a way that it is never not funny. You know what I mean? That's the quality of his comedy. Like, all of the comedians I listen to or watch and they all have their own styles and uh, style and way to tell a joke. And that's, that's just why I enjoyed this, because it is unique, it's different for him. Like, uh, Bill Burr jokes are a bit more, what do you call it, he's hot-headed, if you know what I mean. Jimmy's are punchlines, uh, Ricky Gervais are more of a long storytelling with a really fucked up premise, you know what I mean. And uh, it's, so, it's just always brilliant uh, to watch comedians like this do their bit, and every, like I mentioned, every time you watch it, it's just brilliant. And, oh man, I really did enjoy that. And I hope, I really hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and leave a comment. And I'll see you guys next time.